I can't stand the word impactful, you know what I mean? I, I understand what you're saying, but why do you hate that particular word? I don't know, man. It's just, how is something full of impact? Impact isn't a thing you carry around with you like luggage. Impact means when something hits you, you know, like, seems to be full of impact, you'd have to be hit by a meteor. Generally, when people use the word, it means something has an effect or a significance. Well, why don't they just say effectful? Well, effectful isn't a word. Impactful isn't a word. Is there something really significant you'd like to discuss? What's really on your mind? I guess, well, I get in a lot of fights with people who are always telling me to be happy. And being happy is bad? Well, no, I mean, happiness is always like the goal, but long-term happiness isn't just an emotional state. I mean, you just can't maintain some insane level of enthusiasm. We're just not built that way. A healthy fear of nature keeps us safe. Suppose so, sure. You, you make some good points. So really, if I stay happy and optimistic all the time, I'm putting myself in danger. I could be like, look at that vicious lion, he looks friendly. These people telling me be happy all the time, they don't care if I get eaten by lions. Then they'd probably be like, well, at least the lion got fed. It's like they think it's some kind of a moral failure if you're not happy all the time. And they have the happy face police out on the streets making sure everybody's in a good mood. So what is this? I just start talking and you just kind of sort through what I'm saying or is there going to be any structure to this or what kind of therapy are you doing here, Doc? Well, now that's an excellent question. Let me ask you this. What is it you expect to get out of this therapy? The thing is, you never really know what you're going to get. A long time ago, I used to hear about this rebirthing therapy where they wrap you up in blankets and then act like you're being born out of the blankets. You know, like the blankets are your mom's vagina. Have you ever heard of this, Doc? Well, it was never widely accepted, but I have heard of it. I always wondered, you know, after you're born, then what? You know, do they throw you up in the air, call you sport, feed you with that, here comes a choo-choo in the spoon, you know? Because I think I might respond to something like that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, uh... Anyway, my sister just had a baby. I forget which one. You forget how many children your sister's had? No, I forget which sister. I got seven of them. I know one of them just had another baby. The babies just kind of freak me out, you know, they're always staring at the ceiling. You know what I'm saying, Doc? Doesn't that make you crazy? I wouldn't say crazy. You know how, like, you're looking down at them and trying to have a conversation, and they're just staring at something right over your shoulder. I'm like, what the hell, baby? Well, depending on their age, they wouldn't even have the capacity for language. Their motivations would be more... Do you think babies can see things that we don't see? Well, like what? I don't know. Ghosts, angels, aliens, yard gnomes, Bigfoot. Well, it's true that the human brain doesn't start to form long-term memories until about the age of five. That's exactly what I mean. So by the time they're old enough to tell anyone about it, they've forgotten it even happened. Maybe that's why babies cry all the time. What do you think? Let's circle back to why you're here. Specifically, what brought you here? And what were you hoping to accomplish? Well, you know my wife left me about a year ago. And I've been raising these kids alone. Well, I shouldn't say alone. I get a lot of support from my family, especially my sister Meredith. That's got to be really difficult. I'm sure there's a lot there that you need to work through. Well, I'm still hoping Lisa, that's my wife, comes back eventually. But a couple months ago, my grandmother introduced me to a new friend, and that got a little confusing. I mean, we talk a lot, but most of what keeps us together are the sandwiches. Sandwiches? Yeah. She makes these great sandwiches. Every so often, she gets all dramatic and says we can't do this anymore. And, but then after a couple of nights, she's bringing me more sandwiches. Then there's my friend Rico's sister, Linda. She's married too, but her husband travels a lot, so we talk. We're both kind of in the same boat, you know, but she's the only one who ever really gave me a, you know, what's, what's the word for it? Longing? A yearning in your heart for some deeper meaning? No, 
a coupon for a free session here. Well, it looks like our time is up. We can pick this up next time if you'd like to make another appointment. Thanks, Doc. I feel a lot better. Not affiliated with Dr. Good Duck's Mental Health Emporium. Is there a Mr. Foot? Here, dude. All right, we're done here. You've been talking an awful lot about babies. I had a dream once about an evil baby that had glowing red eyes and fangs and wings like a bat that was flying over a cornfield. What do you think that means, Doc?